Hello, in this video I'm going to do a review of this new Sony camera. I just picked it up. This is the Sony ZV-1. I like it. I plan to use it on our next trip to vlog. It's mostly going to be used for the low light dock rides at Walt Disney World. So we're going to see how it performs. But I figured let's do a comparison and I'm going to compare this to my iPhone 11 Pro. So a few things to know about this camera. First, it does take 4K video. Um, the other thing to know is it will shut off after 10 minutes, but you can go into the options and change that to be high. And I've seen reports that you could take up to, people have been able to take 20, 30 minutes worth of video and still not have any kind of overheating or the camera shutting off. So that's pretty good. It's also got a 24 to 70 millimeter uh, vocal length. It's not as much zoom as the last, the latest RX version, but I think seeing that this is geared towards vloggers, you're not gonna need that much of a zoom anyway. I particularly don't use the zoom, so that feature doesn't matter to me. Um, it's a 20 megapixel one inch sensor. I think that's the, uh, one of the newest sensors that Sony has that they're putting in their cameras. And it also has the real time IAV. And it's supposedly the autofocus is pretty quick. So you can you know, put your hand up, get your face out of focus, take it away. You, know, you should be able to see that it comes back in focus pretty quickly. Another new feature on this camera that I haven't seen before is that there's a button right here. It's kind of hidden. Um, there's a mode button to change the background to defocus. So it's kind of a nice little feature where you can get this background to be in focus or not in focus. Uh, so I think that's really cool. Um, and the other thing to know that the max aperture is f1.8, uh, which is really good for those low light settings. It's something that I'm really interested in. Just a, one other feature I want to show you is you do have the speaker up here right at the top and they give you this uh, wind muff that goes right into the shoehorn so if you want to use that and you could also put in your own little microphone because it does have a mic jack on the side um, the battery life it, it has been about 30 minutes on 4k I've been reading you can get over an hour on uh, 1080 I'm going to test that a little more because I do film all my stuff in 4K. But I think if you just do just have an external battery pack and the extra batteries, then you should be fine. Um, when I do the comparison, I typically do do post, but I'm going to keep the uh, video in sound and raw format for both the iPhone and the Sony so that we can have an accurate uh, comparison. And I say let we just go with Meredith right now, take this camera and out in the wild and just see how it does. We're in our backyard. We're going to take some video of these nice flowers that we have growing. Really looking here to see how these colors pop, how they look in raw format before I do any kind of post-processing. And I think this is a good indication of that before we move on to people. So they look good on both cameras. I'm hoping that it's more truer colors on the, the Sony. Um, it, it's a little hard to see because the brightness on the screen's not there. They, they kind of dim down that screen as they're doing 4K recording. Um, but what do you guys think? How does that side to side comparison look? All right, now we're here at a park. So you can see a bunch of trees, a nice blue sky with the white clouds. And what I want to see here is see the blue really pop out and hopefully some details in the clouds. Um, the one thing I do notice with the camera on the Sony, that there is more of a crop than you get on the iPhone, which I'm kind of okay with. Now, again, when I look at the iPhone directly, the colors look a little brighter, more, a little more vibrant, but I think the colors on the Sony are more the truer colors. And I always can make it more vibrant and you know, brighten it up in post. Um, I'm more focused on trying to get all the details. So, but this is what you can expect on a sunny day here. Now we're gonna do the zoom test. So we're at a football field with the scoreboards at the other end of the end zone. And we're gonna see how far we can zoom in. So we're, let's get going. And I'm just gonna rework this a little. I can still zoom in some more to right about there. It's a pretty good zoom here. Not bad. And 
then we're gonna try to go ahead and zoom right back out. So as you can see, you can zoom pretty far using the iPhone. Just keep in mind, I'm also using the Osmo DJI gimbal, so it helps me keep it steady, while I'm, especially when I'm trying to zoom in. So now let's check out the Sony camera. Now we're gonna try the zoom on the Sony. So we still get the scoreboard at the other end of the end zone, and we will see how close we can get to it. So here we go. And that's it, folks. That's about as close as you can get. So you can see with something like the iPhone, you can get a lot closer. You can zoom in closer to your subjects if it's far away. But again, I don't think that's the intention of this camera. So for me, I don't really zoom in much at all. I have other cameras if I'm really looking to do that. Um, but there you go, that's the comparison on the zoom. We're back on the iPhone and we're doing the sound test now. And you can probably hear it's windy. I think we're catching a lot of that wind on the iPhone. Oh, here's a big gust right here, so you can get a sense of what it's like. I'm not happy about that. I haven't been able to find a good wind muff that would work on the iPhone. And I can use an external mic with the iPhone, but I haven't been able to get that to work. So I'm, right now I'm kind of stuck with just using the built-in microphone. Yeah, I don't know what you guys think of the sound that this produces. Uh, for me, I think it could do better. I've had better on my handy cams. Um, but let's let's go to the Sony and see what that one sounds like. All right, we're back on the Sony, and there's still some wind kicking around. So you have the microphone on the top of the camera, but you also have a wind muff. Um, one thing that I've learned the hard way, and you just want to keep this in mind, is that one of the camera settings you can cut out the wind noise. Do not do that. It makes the sound really horrible. Um, so you want to keep that off. But I am interested to see how this sounds with the wind muff on. I, I assume it's going to sound better. I still don't like the audio quality with the uh, built-in mic. But what's great about here is there is a shoehorn and there is a microphone jack. Alright, we're now on to the walk test. And I'll tell you, I know the iPhone is going to win here because I'm using the DJI Osmo gimbal. So it's going to be a lot smoother. But with the Sony, I did get the stick that came with it. It has all the controls to operate the camera so I can do the zoom, take a photo, and even record. And it has a nice little lock button to kind of prevent me from making a mistake and shutting off my camera. But what I want to know is what do we think of the stabilization on the Sony? It's got the steady shot in the lens, but there is no stabilization in the camera itself. I can tell, of course, the iPhone looks silky smooth, nice and steady. And to tell you the truth, I th I'm thinking the Sony's looking pretty good. Not as good, but it's not bad. You know, you might see a little bit of shakiness. Probably that could be because I'm holding both hands, you know, one camera in each. But it's not so terrible where you could get sick. And hopefully I'm not making you sick by looking at these. But I would definitely think that if you had a, some kind of stick on the Sony that you'd be fine here. And let's just turn around. Yeah, it looks. As long as you're not making sudden movements, I think it'd be fine. So I think it's pretty comparable. All right, now we're on to the selfie mode test. So this is using the front end of the camera on the iPhone. And it's typically not the best camera lens on the phones. Mm -hmm. Usually the front one's the worst. Yeah. Uh, but it still works. I would just not, I would want to use it for low light. I think that's the advantage the Sony will have here. Um, and by the way, I am here with my lovely assistant, Meredith. Um, you know, it looks pretty steady. The quality looks good. And you definitely need to have some kind of gimbal or stick here in order to pull this off. It'd be a lot harder if you were just hand holding it. Um, so let's let's go onto the Sony and see what that looks like. All right, so now we're doing the selfie test on the Sony. The crop makes it a little harder, especially since I'm so tall and you're so short. <laughs> yeah. She's you know she's my little munchkin. 
<laughs> um, but with the Sony here, it's got the screen that pushes out to the sides so we can clearly see ourselves as well as this is going to have the better camera lens than the selfie on the iPhone. So this should work great, especially in low light. I think that's where you would see the uh, biggest difference because uh, the, the max aperture is uh, 1.8. And I know from taking dock rides on the Sony on the iPhone that I was getting some video noise. So this is what the selfie looks like. I would probably prefer the iPhone during the day just because I can get it, it's wider. Where here this is a much tighter shot. So for this test, we're gonna have a person sitting on the bench. So that's where I got my munchkin friend here doing that. And I adjusted the lens on the iPhone to be about the same crap as I could on the Sony and it's more I want to see what the skin tones are going to be like and Meredith might be a little washed out on the iPhone maybe a tad whereas I think I can get a little more detail and she's not as washed out using the Sony and I think that's important I never I'd rather have something that's a little too dark because I can always fix that easily in post-production but if it gets washed out, then you're losing a lot of the details. But I think, I think they're both comparable. Um, yeah, there's not much more to say here. Now I'm gonna try to do a focus test here. I'm not sure how well this will go, but I'm just gonna put my hand up so that gets in focus and we're gonna see how fast Merlet's face gets in focus. So here we go. Ooh. There you go. I saw that come in. Ready? My hands in focused. There you go. One more time. Now let's compare that speed of getting from out of focus to in focus on the Sony. Now on to doing the focus test on the Sony. So I'm going to put my hand up. And I think Meredith gets in focus right away. Let me try that again. So um, from what I read and what I'm seeing, it looks like it is a lot faster to get objects in focus on the Sony. So that's one thing that you'll want to keep in mind. That iPhone is good, but the Sony is going to be better. All right, so I just wanted to show the setup. So here's the iPhone 11 Pro on its gimbal. And this is kind of what I use. Um, I am using a different software. I'm not using the DJI that will, that will work for um, zooms, but I'm using Filmic Pro. It just gives me a little bit more ability to change the apertures and the ISO to get the exact shots that I want. So, so again, this is my setup. And just one important thing, just make sure if you're gonna have a gimbal, you need to balance it before you turn it on. Um, I can give you a real quick tip on that. With it powered off, if you have it like this, you should be able to set up your gimbal to pretty much stand on its own while it's turned off. And that's how you know that everything's balanced correctly. So now let's go to the Sony and I'll show you what that setup looks like. So now here's the setup on the Sony. So here's my stick. There's all my buttons. And just so you know, this also doubles as a tripod. So I can kind of just set it up like this as well. This is the Rode microphone I was talking about, which I most likely will use. It's plugged into the side. And I just also want to show you that's how the video screen can come out. But I can also flip it like this if I want to see it from behind. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, and when I power it on, you can see there's the lens coming out just like that. So that's that's my current setup using the Sony ZV-1. So here's my thoughts on the Sony ZV-1. My primary use case for getting this is the dock rides with the low light at Disney. If I'm vlogging, walking around, I think having the iPhone on the gimbal is going to be more convenient. It gives me just as a good quality, if not better quality in certain cases, and I get the extra wide angle. But knowing I'm only going to use this for the dock low light rides I think this is going to work out great I like the fact that I can hook up an external mic and it has a shoehorn 
it's a very small profile. So if I'm like on Soaring, Winnie the Pooh, or any of those, you know, Nemo, those low light rides, I think this is gonna work out great. I like the picture quality. The built-in sound is okay in my opinion, but that's gonna be the case in most cameras anyway. Most people are gonna use an external mic. And it's, it's fairly cheap compared to like the RX, the latest RX model, which I had in December. I see, you know, that's, this is what, $700, it was $800 with the stick. And I think that was a good enough deal. I just need extra, some extra batteries and I'm good to go. So I hope you found this to be useful. Maybe it will help you make a decision if you're in the hunt for a new camera. Um, having the side-by-side, -side, typically when I'm shopping for a camera, I like to see it out in the wild, get actual footage, so I can go ahead and make my own conclusions. But the specs and everything in here, and knowing what the price point is, I would recommend this if you're looking for a travel camera or something for Disney World. So I hope you liked this. We may try to do more of these. So go ahead, subscribe our channel if you're already not subscribed and click that notification bell because we do upload and we do go live on a weekly basis. So until next time, we'll talk to you soon. Bye.